In this video, we're gonna take a look at some heavy bag work that we can incorporate into our martial arts. So at a basic level, we want to use basic principles that they have in boxing. This way we get to understand the way that we can increase the force and develop the power and conditioning for our body so then we can strike much harder when it comes to a self-defense situation. And the first technique we're gonna look at is going to be the jab. <laughs> This is going to be our range to target. We're not looking to put too much force through this punch. This is just a deterrent. This is to keep the opponent back. As we set our position, we need to be able to strike the bag, but at the same time, we don't want to be too close because obviously that takes us into a trapping range. When you throw the jab, it tends to be your weaker hand because you're teeing up ready to hit heavy with your more dominant side. We want to try and keep the force basically in the center. So as we jab the bag, we don't want too much swing. We just want to be hitting solidly. So transitioning that power all the way through the arm and connecting with something nice and solid. One thing that I do want to mention that even though we're not using traditional boxing techniques quite as strict as they would if you were in the ring, you still have to get used to throwing these shots from guard. So as you're working the heavy bag, if you're in range, your hands need to be up. So if you can hit your jab, then this means that your opponent can also hit you. Keeping both hands up in good position, you're just going to throw it out at about head height, clench the fist, and try to control the bag so it doesn't swing too much. As soon as you've practiced a few of these punches, just warming up with that jab, you're going to start to move your feet around. This is gonna help you to decide whether you're in range or not. So as you step, you can step out of range. As you can see here, I can't hit the bag. So I must move my body around. And then as soon as I step just into range, I'm learning to see the distance that I am to my opponent. So as the bag moves, I need to recalculate that distance every single time. When I step out and then move back in, I'm gonna snap that jab out and just try to get used to being within that range where I can throw my punch. The second punch we're gonna look at is going to be the cross. You'll notice that we start to incorporate a lot of body mechanics. The cross is gonna form the basis of your power generation for when you're finishing or following up on a technique. So as we stand here with our jab, we're keeping the body fairly neutral. We can only just about reach our target. This means that our opponent, if they're of similar size, is in the same boat. As soon as I begin to shift my weight, I'm going to roll up and I'm gonna throw my cross. Now, as soon as I throw the cross, the power generation is gonna be that much more and therefore I need much better body mechanics and conditioning in order to deliver the power from the full body through that one punch. So from this position, as I'm jabbing, I'm keeping that position and I'm the right distance just to make contact with the bag. Now, as I roll my hip over, I'm gonna push from my back foot all the way up and then connect. And again, I want to be striking the bag and then bringing the hand straight back. So this works very well as a combination of a jab and a cross because we're measuring the distance. We know how far away the bag is and then as soon as I time my cross, that means I can deliver just that little bit more power. The third punch we're gonna look at is going to be the hook. Now the hook is going to be a much shorter range strike because we keep the arm fairly bent. So it's nearly at 90 degrees. You can have your hand in a couple of positions. You can have the hand flat so the palm is down or you can have the palm facing towards you almost like holding a cup. <clears throat> so as you throw the hook, you want the wrist to be in direct line with the elbow and that way the bone alignment supports the fist. As we're throwing that jab out, we're trying to keep the weight in the center. As we throw the cross, we bring the weight forwards onto that front leg, and with that transfer of power comes a much heavier punch. With the hook, 
as we sit back, we're going to hook to the back. We're forwards off the cross and we're going to drop the weight onto our back leg and that's going to allow us just a little bit more space to throw that hook. You want to try to take the weight off that front leg because as your body twists, sometimes if your foot gets stuck, there's a lot of force that can go through the knee. We're gonna sit back and then throw that hook. But again, we're just working the body mechanics, trying to get comfortable moving around the bag and trying to mix up the strikes so we get a little bit of variety in our training. So again, as you're throwing the hook, it's just gonna come back. The last punch we're gonna look at is going to be the uppercut. The uppercut is another forward moving punch, which means that as you deliver the power, whether it's off the front or the back hand, you want the body to be moving towards the bag. Because it's so close, you'll notice that you have to contort the body a lot. You have to roll the shoulders, a little dip in the hips, compression in the ribs. The uppercut is going to be thrown from a much closer range. The uppercut is a really nice complementary punch to the hook. So as you sit back and you hook, you can come forwards and uppercut. When you're throwing uppercuts to the bag, you have to be very careful because the bag is straight. So there's quite a lot of chance that you can slip off it. You want to be punching straight into the bag so you get really good bone alignment through the wrist, through the elbow, and all the way into the body. So as you throw that uppercut, you want to try and hit as flat as possible so you don't skim off the bag and come up. There's also a chance that you're gonna catch your knuckles and then bend your wrist backwards. So again, be careful when you're throwing the power, get used to the position first, and then slowly increase the power as you get more confident with each punch. Taking the punches that we've looked at, we're gonna work a few combinations. So the first one is gonna be nice and easy, it's just gonna be jab cross, and it's something that you should use to warm up because it gets the body moving in both directions. So as you jab, and then cross straight in. So. So to build on the last combination, we're just going to throw a hook on the end. This is quite nice because we have that neutral position for the jab, we have the weight coming forwards for the cross, and then we're sitting back for the hook. The thing that you need to be aware of with this combination is that the cross and the hook are two different distances. So as you extend and you hit with that cross, either wait for the bag to move back towards you slightly, or you have to adjust your feet ever so slightly to the side to get your hook in. For the third combination, we're going to throw two shots consecutively off the right hand. So the first one's going to be the left jab. You always want to lead with the left jab because that gives you that range to target. Really good practice just to know how far you are from your opponent at all times. Then we're going to step in, we're going to hit with the cross and then reload the body. And then at the right time, step in and hit that uppercut. So from here, we're going to go one, two, two three. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.